You ready for Off Grid Cabin Tour Part 2? <laughs> this is Off Grid Cabin Tour Part 2. Going to mostly focus on things outside. I know in the first one we didn't show you the solar controller. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that, which is on the inside. There's our solar controller. This tells us what is going on, how well our batteries are doing, how much watts the solar panels are creating, and uh, where we're at with our charge. All right, so here's the guts of the operation of our solar system. We have the solar controller, the actual controller. The other was just the plate that gave the readout for the controller. This is the inverter. It's just a 12 volt system that we're running here and here's our battery bank and next to it is all the distilled water. Okay that whole solar unit is under these stairs. It's that lid that you lift off and that's where the batteries and the inverter and the controller are. Right under there. You like that critter? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. huh? Okay there's the wire that goes from the solar panels. It runs down this wall here and then into where the controller is. Wire runs across and this is where it all connects and there's our panels. That's our whole solar system as well our solar hot water heater. You can kind of see it and you can see well not kind of you can see one of the tubes is broken and these are glass tubes <clears throat> and this one got hit by a rock you can imagine all this gravel and with all of the little ones that we have that sometimes rocks do fly we do rainwater catchment into this tank here I'm just gonna clamber on top of the roof and show you that rainwater catchment for the patio off the patio I guess I should say Solar panels. Right here we have them on these brackets so we can adjust them. So, this rainwater catchment, all we did here is we just put a screen in here. So, it's a very minimal pre rinse, pre wash. Um, we just screen out the big particulates because this one is just for watering the livestock and watering the garden. So our other rainwater catchment catches from this roof here, the A-frame. I'll take you around and show you the tank that that goes into. Building under construction that's attached to the back of our house. It's going to be awesome when this is done because in this front section here we're going to have a shop and, and then in the back section here it's going to be barn. This is where we'll be able to bring the cows in and uh, do some milking. Get some hopefully some really good milking done in here. So this is the other portion of the rainwater catchment. This is a pre-wash here. What we do is we open this valve here and then when it rains, all the water comes down, the initial water that has all the particulates and all that stuff on it, all that gets washed off. So it's called a pre-wash. All that gets washed off the roof. So we leave this open for a while, and after it's been raining for a while, and the water's running pretty clean, we come and we close this valve. Then this whole thing fills up, and once it fills up, then it goes over here and goes into the tank there. This tank is a 1500 gallon tank just like the one out front but we fully enclosed this one and we've insulated it. Now this tank is on a block tower. See this tower is I can touch the bottom now of the tank but before this was poured I could not touch it I'd have to climb. To the bottom of the tank this tower was about 10 feet tall all right, you can see from this view better. So we put the tank as high as it absolutely could be so that it was lower than the roof line here where the gutters come in. So the gutters come in, it drops, and then it can actually still flow into that tank. 
So that's our rainwater catchment. And this is high enough that it will it gravity feeds all the plumbing in the house. Can you all hear that? I'm out here early morning after a big rain event. Our creek is just going crazy. This is why we capture rainwater, guys. Check this out. The banks are flooded. All right, I'm gonna show you another part of off-grid living and permaculture mindset, and that is composting. These are four composting bins, four by four. So it's pallet size, each one was pallet size. So what we're doing with these is we are creating soil. You can see that? Look at that nice soil in there. We overwintered our plants into here because while it's comp composting breaking down, it, cr it creates a lot of heat. So it helps the plants to overwinter. And you can see these plants did pretty well in here, overwintered. There's <laughs> strawberries blooming, um, blueberries here, raspberries, more raspberries there. So we have some trees to plant, we have some things to plant still. How important is soil creation? When you think about monoculture, so you think about these huge farms, they are monoculture, so they would plant like miles of corn and then they would wipe that out. The next year they might plant miles of soy um, and so on and so forth. And they do that for ease of harvest, for ease of planting, they just go and plant the same thing. But what's happening to that soil? The soil is dying, the soil is eroding, all the microorganisms in the soil are dying. The soil is losing fertility. So what is happening to the nutrition of the food that that soil is producing? The nutrition is leaving the food. So I remember Joel Salatin years ago. I don't remember if it was the DVD I, we bought from him or if it was a video we watched or a book I read of his. I've read several of his books. 
and he talked about how every year on Polyface Farms, his, he is gaining soil. And that just struck me, going, how do you make soil? So on a small scale, here is a way to make soil. Compost. Compost, compost. And as Jeff Lawton would say, compost everything. You can do it. <laughs> Create the right conditions, give it enough time, and you can compost just about anything. So this is another huge permaculture concept and um, off-grid living. If you're going to try to produce your own food in a small area, you need to create soil. So here is another part of off-grid living. And this is one that we've chosen. We've chosen uh, to use a composting toilet. So I built this thing here. <laughs> and it's just the covering is all it is for the sawdust. This is where we get our sawdust for our composting toilet. And I built this cover so that our sawdust will stay more dry in all this wet weather. So we come out here, we fill up a bucket of just sawdust, and we take it into the bathroom, and it sits with the toilet. And whenever you do your business to the toilet, you put a scoop or two of sawdust in there. Alright, so another part of off-grid living is refrigeration, right? And so what we have is a little freezer, a very small chest freezer. Uh, and we freeze blocks and then we put them into our ice box that my wife showed in the previous uh, off-grid tour, off-grid cabin tour video. But our hope is to have this root cellar in here in a little while. And we just had some really nice rains. And look what happened. It filled up like three blocks high with water. And the kids have been loving it. It has made the best pool ever as far as they're concerned. But we're hoping that this root cellar can preserve a lot of food for us in the future. Hey guys, you, you enjoying a dinner mommy made? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mommy makes excellent dinners, doesn't she? Yeah. You sure about that? Got a busy tongue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that yesterday? Okay, so this concludes the end of the Smith Cabin off grid tour. We're calling this channel Thousands of Roots because I think that's what we want to really brand um, the name of what we're doing as a permaculture concept. Thousands of Roots here on the homestead. And thank you so much for watching these uh, videos. Thank you so much for your interest and I sure hope it encourages you and inspires you to do something great and to grow your own food to be a producer. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and share. Have a fantastic day.